big fat quiz of everything. That's right. This is the quiz of everything, not just the year, bloody everything. Think of it like a pub quiz that started comfort eating. <laughs> Let's meet the teams, uh, the king of the chat show and the queen of the sketch show. It's Jonathan Ross and David Williams. Yeah. <laughs> Next up, representing Canada and Ireland, two of my favourite countries in the third world, <laughs> Catherine Ryan and Ashling B. Next, they're both incredibly weird but great mates. It's like they both found imaginary friends who were actually real. It's Noel Fielding and Richard R. Wiley. <laughs> Catherine, Ashling, I've got to ask straight away, talk me through what you're wearing. This is a complete accident. We did not plan this at all. Not at all. <laughs> <laughs> we just had no time to get dressed this evening. We're busy. We're busy women. That's why we're never on the same panel show, except right now. Yeah. <laughs> and we brought two extra bitches just to even it out. That's a real dog. <laughs> yeah. That's a real dog. You haven't, you're not working that with your thumb. No, I'm not. Do, how many dogs did you have at the absolute high point of dog mania in the Ross household? Nine. <gasps> Nine? Your Nine. house must have smelled like poo all the well, time. Well, it smelled like poo already. We got the dogs to disguise it. Really. <laughs> And, the, and it worked. Do you let them on the Millennium Falcon with you? They're not dogs, they're Wookiees, mate. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe anyone's going to be given a hard time about outfits. It's Jonathan. <laughs> <laughs> and why, have you left, why have you left the tie behind? Jimmy. What's happened? <laughs> because I, I wanted to appear more, more sort of more casual. Why is exposing your neck more casual? <laughs> <laughs> He's just really proud of his Adam's apple. <laughs> <laughs> Give us yeah. a swallow, Jimmy. <laughs> it's, it's weird because you were saying that, but this is the sort of thing that David normally says. <laughs> No, briefly to your outfit because people will be tuning in that are, 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 are amused. What do you mean? Wait, I'll, I'll show you it in full. Believe... It's like oh, a mind the hang on, I'll hold this. Yeah, that's I'll that's hold the this. only way to show it is a swivel. Uh, spin me, Richard. Spin me. <laughs> <laughs> my mum used to wear a caftan on date night with my dad. Wow. And she'd wear no bra. Yeah. Have you got a bra on tonight? No. No. <laughs> with no bra, sort of sexy. So that's what I think of when I see you in that. I think of... Uh, I think of my mum with no bra on. <laughs> Can I ask a question, David? Yes. Why were you there on date night knowing about your mother wearing no bra and a caftan? Because we were, we were sent to bed early and we'd know that my mum and dad were planning to... <laughs> and there'd be nuts and Cinzano would come out and that would be there. It sounds to me like they were inviting other people round as well. <laughs> It's a good job my mum will never watch this programme. <laughs> well, my, my friend up the road, Steve, his mum and dad, they, he said they have swingers parties, they have swingers parties. I said, I'm sure they don't. He said, they do have swingers parties. This is before we really knew what swingers parties were. And I said, how do you know? Because you're never there. He was always sent away. He'd go and stay with an uncle or something. He said, I found the photographs. Wow. And I said, where are they? <laughs> and he showed them to me. Oh. And we found the photographs. And you could see his mum quite clearly in some of the photographs which is something I've never fully recovered from. Uh, but the dad, his face was in other photographs, and I said, how do you know it's your dad? And he went, the socks. <laughs> and he had his socks on in every photograph, mm. and then to prove it to me, he got the socks out of the drawer. <laughs> it's, a, it's a lovely story, isn't it? <laughs> I mean, I mean, it gets people in the mood for a lovely quiz, isn't it? <laughs> Uh, well, look, what about team names? Uh, David, Jonathan, have you got a team name this evening? Now that Tom Hiddleston and uh, Taylor Swift, they split up, there's no more Hiddle Swift, OK? Ooh. Angelina Jolie and Brad Pitt, they split up, there's no more Brangelina. We thought maybe I was saying, why don't we put our names together, like mm. Javid or, uh, or, or Dave Fan? David, but that sounds like, like some sort of charity sponsorship thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's not so but good. we could go with it. I think just call it Williams. <laughs> Just Williams. That's just not Williams. Just simply yeah, Williams. No, but like that's not the two names I together. Like it's what the W from Was uh, and Wallium. <laughs> 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 <laughs>
All right, Williams. Good. OK, Williams. Uh, Catherine, Ashley, what, what's your team going to be called? Well, we've kind of combined some of our favourite things. Uh, we know there's only two of us, uh, two of this particular type of people on the show. Uh, it drums up a lot of controversy. Um, so we are calling ourselves um, the foreign twerkers. twerkers. Foreign twerkers. Foreign twerkers? Yeah, yeah. I love it. Yeah. Twerkers. We're trying to make people uh, regret Brexit. <laughs> And twerking. Uh, Noel, Richard, have you got a name? Cafe Vape. <laughs> <laughs> I think if I want to do this, what, why, why would you be called Cafe Vape? Richard? Don't try and uh, analyse it, Jimmy. Just go with it. It's, um... <laughs> Mind your own business, Jimmy. <laughs> Ours is the business of vaping in a cafe. What goes on in Cafe Vape stays in Cafe Vape. <laughs> or the other... Um, because I think often we can be overly um, self-deprecating and hesitant. Um, so I th thought maybe humanity's last hope. <laughs> I think go humanity's last hope. I okay. like that. All right. All right. Your All right. choice, Jimmy. Your show. <laughs> no, 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 no. Okay. So we got we got Williams, <laughs> foreign twerkers, and humanity's last hope. <laughs> OK, on with the quiz. Our first round is all about history, although thankfully not the kind on my internet browser. <laughs> in January 1793, the King of France, Louis XVI, was beheaded during the French Revolution, but not before uttering his famous last words. <laughs> <laughs> the sinking of the Titanic in 1912 was a terrible tragedy, resulting in the deaths of over 1,500 people, but without it, we would never have seen Kate Winslet's boobies, so swings and roundabouts. <laughs> let's, uh, let's get started. Here are some questions. Uh, for our first question, it's over to fitness guru and body coach, uh, Mr Joe Wicks. Hi, Jimmy. I'm known for getting people in shape and getting them burning fat. But if I had a time machine and had to go back and help one person, it'd be William the Conqueror. Do you know why? He ate so much food and got so big and heavy, he couldn't even ride his own horse. So what terrible diet did he use to get himself back in the saddle? Right. Who's that? All the Bee Gees. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> that is, that is uh, fitness guru Joe Wicks or all the Bee Gees. <laughs> OK, have you all got answers to that first one? Yes. yes. OK, great, OK. As always, the children of Mitchellbrook Primary School have put together a special school play for us. What big event are they acting out here? We have made a website. Now people can listen to lots of songs. Free music! No more CD! Yay! Give back our song! We want our money! We are telling on you! You have been very naughty! Go on the other song websites instead. Yay! <laughs> beautiful, right? Not for love. The children of Mitchellbrook Primary there. Uh, so, what, what uh, news story were they, were they acting out? What historical event? Can I just confirm that Ashling is stroking a dog? Oh! <laughs> <laughs> I'm having it's a under great a desk. show, guys. I'm very <laughs> relaxed. <laughs> <laughs> this is what I'm stroking. Oh, okay, so the 1948 London Olympics was known as the Austerity Games. The male British athletes had to provide their own kit, but one sponsor provided them with something else. What was it? Okay. Who was the sponsor? I think I could probably tell you that without giving it away. Who then? Mm. I think it was Coopers. Were they involved in horses, Coopers? They were not involved in horses. Oh, Are shit. you lying to me? Yes. No. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'll cross out horses. A potato. <laughs> I'd like to see the austerity games, but like with austerity subject matter. So instead, people could be like wrestling with the idea that the banks are going to foreclose in your house. <laughs> <laughs> or like the, the, the male backstroke could be just a woman like stroking her husband's back. Going, Don't worry, Jimmy, it's all going to get you easier. <laughs> Why did you use the word Jimmy? <laughs> sometimes, I use my sometimes I need reassurance. <laughs> OK, take a look at this footage of a man hard at work in Bradford in the 1940s. All I want to know is, what's his job? We have, we've got it. We've got it, Jimmy. We've got it. 
You've got it. That was my Saturday job in the 40s. <laughs> <laughs> you, know, you had a job in um, B&Q. Oh, I did have... A, this is a true story. Is I true. got a job in B&Q and they gave... <laughs> this is true. It's and true. they gave me the uniform on the first day and it was red dungarees and I went, there's no way this can happen. <laughs> What are you doing? And I went, Mum, it was red dungarees. And she went, all right, fair enough. <laughs> you used to work in a, in a Hooters, right? Yeah. And Hooters is not like a titty bar or anything. Do they sell holes? It's an owl sanctuary. <laughs> I opened the first Hooters in the UK. You're welcome. <laughs> and I got fired from Hooters for writing uh, club sandwiches, not seals, on the lunch board. True story. <laughs> Have you ever been clubbed, Jimmy? Cos in the dark alley, you sound like a seal when you laugh. <laughs> I can looks... argue with that. It's a very good point well made. I've got he... to be very careful. Um... He looks a bit like a seal as well. Maybe yeah. that's why he's not wearing a tie. Very smooth. Yeah. Place a ball on his nose and see if it balances. Now that's how it I'll do it! <laughs> <laughs> He was very confident that he could place a single ball. <laughs> Time for a say what you see. Oh. OK. I see a seal. <laughs> <laughs> a lovely slippery seal. <laughs> uh, <laughs> oh, oh, he's made it sound... Oh, no. OK. Uh, so these pictures are spelling out a famous event from history. Can you guess what the event is? Amazing. Famous event. A famous event. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, yes, we've got it! Yes! We've got it. Have you got it, though? Yes, yes we have. We we've actually, got it, you, we actually, we actually you have. smooth seal yes. lover. <laughs> but he... We've oh, even got, got it. I, okay. I, I know this now. OK, right, I've got some answers. You ready? Yes. You've got yeah. something? Yeah. So first we heard from Joe Wicks, who wanted to know what diet William the Conqueror used to lose weight. What did you get? We put Le Atkins. <laughs> as it was known in France Le at the time. Le Atkins diet. Le Atkins diet. diet. You think, you think William the Conqueror invented the Atkins diet? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Le Atkins. Uh, OK. Uh, Catherine, Le actually, Atkins. a more sensible answer from you? We, yes, we did a more sensible a uh, answer, and we did it in English. Lord Atkins diet. <laughs> yeah. You think the Atkins as well? You think he's... Uh, William the Conqueror, Atkins. It's the only one that works, Jimmy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Noel, Richard, what did you put? No swans before lunch. <laughs> Try and lay off the candy floss. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, well, I can tell you, no one got it. It's, it's an extraordinary diet that he went on. He, uh, he actually shunned food. He only drank alcohol to lose weight. Oh. <laughs> that, was, that was his part. It's sort of like a modern-day Glaswegian. <laughs> <laughs> you saw the children of Mitchellbrook Primary School act out a big event from history. What do you think it was? Napster. Napster. You got Napster. What did you think it was to do with Napster? Well, it was to do with the free music being given out on Napster. And then the rock bands banded together and they said, no, no. we're not having this, we want to be paid. What you band? Should... What band was it? Metallica. Mm. You're absolutely right, it was Metallica. Yes! Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Catherine, Ashley. We knew it was the Napster shutdown. Napster got shut down. OK, Noel, Richard? There's no jokes here. We'll move on. Napster and then I panicked and drew an eel wearing a top hat. <laughs> OK, points all around for that. Do you remember how exciting Napster was? Because I had it very young, and I think I was one of the first people... And you really thought you were going to go to prison. And they'd tell you all the time, you'll go to prison, and they had all these adverts. And no, none of us ever went to prison, not for that. <laughs> That's not exciting, the idea of prison. I would get bummed to death. <laughs> That's a nice phrase, isn't it? No. <laughs> <laughs> You're presuming a lot about your well, attractiveness, aren't well, you? <laughs> Using Napster, oh, I, I would be bummed to death. Bummed. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I just couldn't be sent to prison, my lord. I'll be bummed to death. <laughs> to be fair, you you're reasonably <laughs> on, on, the, on this panel. You're hey. probably the best-looking man in a caftan. I'll give you that. <laughs> It's my favourite thing in America when they always go, oh, my God, when my grandmother died, I was just so bummed. I, <laughs> everyone in my family to was death. bummed. <laughs> I, was, I, was, I, was, I was almost bummed to death. Just <laughs> All right, so it was Napster being sued by Metallica. You all get points for that. Um, OK, next I asked you what freebie was given to male athletes at the 1948 London Olympics. What, what have you all got? We put gin. Gin. Gin, gin. 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 That they gave gin. him gin. That if you, were, if you had a sort of long running race yeah. in those days, 
they wouldn't give you water. Oh, you, you'd have a swig of gin as you ran past. Because it was austerity. Water was hard to get, but gin, gin everywhere. Gin was very cheap. <laughs> right, OK. Uh, Catherine, Ashley, what, what did you put? One brazen whore. <laughs> <laughs> the dog is now leaving you as a protest for that statement. <laughs> He doesn't oh, like no, your Megan. pity. Uh, Noel, well, Richard? Starting pistols. <laughs> you know, all the male athletes were given their own starting pistols. <laughs> and, and, and personal finishing lines. So <laughs> you could win a race without getting out of bang, your chair. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> bang, wow. Who's won? Who's won? You've won. won. <laughs> bang, wow. Bang, bang wow. wow. <laughs> Personal best in the bag. That's actually a George Formby song. Bang wow. Well, give away. <laughs> <laughs> Bang wow. Well, well I, can t I can tell you, none of you got it right. Uh -huh. uh, they were actually given Y fronts. Why? They were each given, that's all they got, just a pair of Y fronts each. Well, good people of Coopers sponsored the games. Whose legs are they coming in from the left? Got the sock guy. <laughs> the sock man. Yes. <laughs> it's Steve's dad. It's Steve's dad. <laughs> Did the women get to wear for the Olympics, Jimmy? I, d I don't think they got... I think they had to bring their own uh, uniforms, their own kit, and then they, they just... There was no talk of, uh, of uh, women's unmentionables because they were unmentionable at the time. No, they weren't allowed to compete <coughs> in the Olympics. <gasps> Let's all just take a moment to check our privilege. OK. <laughs> Catherine, I'm still not allowed to compete in the Olympics. <laughs> Uh, I showed you footage of a man tapping on people's windows. What do you think his job was? What people don't realise, Jimmy, is that's his <laughs> finger. That's how he got that job. <laughs> <laughs> Noel, Richard, what, did you, what do you think? Duelist slash pole vaulter. <laughs> pole vaulter scout. <laughs> uh, Catherine, Ashton, what did you put? Well, we put... But I spelled it wrong. Uh, uh, Phantom Tickler. But I, I wrote Heckler. <laughs> Because I think I was working through some issues. Um, I say both are wrong. Yeah. We didn't know. Phantom Heckler, Phantom well, Tickler, what? both wrong. We got it. What, we what do you know think? this one? It's a knocker upper. It used to go around and wake people up in the morning. You tap on the window. Can you get up, please? You need to go to the factory now. Thank you. <laughs> was he that camp? Did you need to... Probably. <laughs> Thank you so much. I'll be at the factory in ten minutes. <laughs> <laughs> You need to be in the coal mine, dear. All right, dear, I'm coming. <laughs> and that's your, that's your Bradford accent, isn't that's it? That's my impression of people who worked in coal mines in the uh, 1930s. Yeah, it's very accurate. I thought knocker-upper is, like, someone you bring home to your mother. You yeah. know, like, a knock oh, she's a real knocker-upper. Get her pregnant, like... <laughs> a knocker-upper. Like, one of those guys who, like, just crimples a bit of plastic by the bed and says he's putting on a condom. <laughs> I yeah. can tell you, Jonathan David, you got it exactly yes. right. He was thank called you. a yes. knocker up. Yes. Thank you. He used to wake people up for shift work. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. And finally, you saw a say what you see. What event in history do you think it was? It was King Edward abdicates. Catherine, Ashley? We got it right as well. We said yeah. King Edward abs jackates. <laughs> kind of you got Jack, Jack D, but you went with the Jack, not the D. Yeah, like abdicate. Sounds good. Yeah. Okay. Um, Noel, Richard? Abjecate sounds like you've ejaculated a throne, though. <laughs> Which is hard on the urethra. <laughs> uh, well, you all get points, points all round there. Yes. Yes, it was, it was King Edward Abjecate. Abjecate. So, at the end of the first round, let's check in on the scores. Uh, Jonathan and David have three. Uh, Catherine and Ashing have two. Noel and Richard have two. Pretty close. Time for us to take a quick break so we can let Catherine's dogs outside for a quick pee and a run around. See you in a bit. to the Big Fat Quiz of everything. This round is all about music. We're going to look back at some of the people responsible for the greatest music in history, from Mozart to John Lennon, right up to the bloke who dumped Adele. <laughs> Before he died, Elvis was grossly overweight, refused to diet and had no regard for his health. Or, to put it another way, Elvis was American. <laughs> Time for some more questions. Yes. OK. Uh, first up, it's over to Channel 4 News, where our very own anchorman, Jon Snow, is reporting on a classic hit. 
The Met Office has issued a severe weather warning ahead of adverse conditions expected from 10.30 tonight. Forecasters had previously reported rising humidity and low readings on the barometer. Precipitation is expected to be dark and lean, followed by a rough, tough, strong and mean front moving in from the south. Sources have indicated that this unusual phenomenon is best witnessed from the streets, with lonely women urged to leave their umbrellas at home. Those unable to go outside are advised to rip off the roof and stay in bed. Flooding and disruption to travel is expected. Back to you, Jimmy. <laughs> well, so I need the song and the artist. Got it. Got both. OK. Got <clears throat> what is the connection between this... Pajamas lying side by side, ladies nice as I have spied. I've often seen what goes inside when I'm cleaning windows. This... And this. Yes, we got it. We've got it. We've got it. We got, got it. We got, got it. We got it. We got it. I worry though. Have I you got it? Yeah, we've, we've got, got it. it. Still got we it. have got them all. We've got it. Okay. <laughs> uh, in a recent poll, "Life" by Desiree was voted as having the worst lyrics of all time. The first verse contains these lines: "I don't want to see a ghost. It's the sight that I fear most. All I want to know is what's the next line." Yeah. And she, she, uh, Desiree actually gave up music just a few years before recording that. <laughs> In 2001, this is, this is a question designed for Noel Fielding. Surely this is the one thing you may know. In 2001, the band Kiss brought out a range of merchandise. By, but which item prompted Gene Simmons to say, I love living, but this makes the alternative look pretty damn good? This looks like Noel's oh. Christmas uh, photo of his family. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know, I've got Mom, a real Dad. story about Kiss. Do you want to know? This is Don't, true. What's your true when story I was about Kiss? Seven or six, my mum and dad took me to a Kiss concert and I dressed up as Gene Simmons. And then the <laughs> tour manager of Kiss said, saw me. I was like about this big, but immaculate costume. And uh, he said, oh my God, he went, Gene's got to see this. He'll absolutely love it. So he took me off to meet Gene. Obviously, it was the 70s. My mum and dad didn't mind that I'd gone off with a total stranger. Oh. And, uh, I went to Gene's dressing room and he said, look, just go in. Knock, I'll knock on the door and you just go in. It'll absolutely freak him out. He'll love it. And I went in and there was nobody in there. <laughs> and I was standing there and then the rest of the band came in and saw me and just <laughs> thought that Gene had shrunk. <laughs> Finally, Shaggy released his smash hit, It Wasn't Me, in the year 2000. In the song, he gives advice to his friend, Mr Rick Rock, after he's been caught by his girlfriend in a number of compromising situations. Can you name three of the places yeah. Rick Rock was allegedly seen yeah. making okay. love? Hold on. What is the name of the man we're talking about? Mr Rick Rock. So we're talking about where Shaggy made love or Rick Rock made love? No, no, Shaggy's <laughs> just giving advice <laughs> to his friend. <laughs> Rick Rock. So nightmare. Shaggy's <laughs> talking to Rick Rock? <laughs> Rick Walk. Rick Walk. Rick Walk. <laughs> Rick Walk. Rick Walk. Rick Walk. <laughs> David, you're now saying it wrong. Rick That's Rock. His name. Who cares Rick what his Walk. name is? Yes, I got it. <laughs> you just said Rick Walk. Who is Rick Rock anyway? I don't even know. I mean, Shaggy's friend. <laughs> well, I've never heard of him. Is he well, a I wrestler? Think it's Shaggy got some new friends with better names. Yeah. <laughs> OK, you ready for some answers? Yes, yes Jimmy. OK. You saw Jon Snow reporting on a classic dance floor filler. What was the song? Oh, the okay. Weather Girls, It's, it's Raining, Raining Men. Men. Yeah. That's actually my anthem. <laughs> Ashley? We put It's Raining <laughs> Men. Yeah. Weather, weather Girls! Weather girls. <laughs> what, what did you think it was, Noel, Richard? It seems a bit convenient that they were called <laughs> the Weather Girls. <laughs> <laughs> How do you mean convenient? Well, did they come up with the song and then just come up with it? I mean, it, it doesn't add up. Anyway, <laughs> it's just smacks We've of convenience. We've got it's raining men in the corner, look, but then he's put frog, frog chorus. chorus. Like absolute lunacy. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go back to Jon Snow to confirm.
<laughs> Who's not absolutely soaking wet after that? <laughs> Just imagine if you... That's all you were given to wank to. A <laughs> <laughs> hundred years. That would be tough. You, when punishment. were you given stuff to wank to? <laughs> when said, did that happen, David? Said, Here are your wanking prison. materials. <laughs> now get back in the cave. For, a hundred, for the next hundred years. If that years. was all you were given to wank to... <laughs> it's a, it would certainly be a challenge, but I think doable. <laughs> OK, I asked you, uh, what was the connection between when I'm cleaning windows, God Save the Queen, and Love to Love You Baby? No, Richard, what do you no think? No, at all. Thank you, with that expectation that would be wrong. Yeah, go on, what have you got? They were banned. OK, uh, Catherine, Ashling? Well, we had a disagreement. What, what did you think? Ashling thought they were all number ones, and I said, no way, they're all about sex. <laughs> right, I mean, George Formby's uh, predates the charts. Oh. Definitely not number one. And then you think sex. That was so yeah, aggressive, he's... Jimmy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That was the oh, most I'm weirdly sorry. aggressive thing. By the way, there weren't even charts when that came out. <laughs> so, like, loser. Uh, second point, um, no one's even had sex with the Queen. And, like, third point, no. <laughs> If you look at Jimmy and George, it looks like you, but if you look in the back of a spoon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, um... he's right with the sex, cos, like, George Formby was like, oh, I'm looking in your window, I'm seeing your knickers. Oh, I'm so charming, cos I've got a tiny guitar. And he's like, not no. a cockney. <laughs> Is he not? He was from up north. And second, it's a ukulele. <laughs> yeah, second point. <laughs> there no chance yeah. it's a ukulele. ukulele. <laughs> whoa! <laughs> what? Whoa! <laughs> Why? What's going on? No one cares. <laughs> We're all so united here. Down. We're all one. We all have problems expressing intimacy. <laughs> <laughs> we all find it hard to be vulnerable. Let's work as a team. Do you want yeah. to go on the puppy, Richard? I would like a go on the puppy. Oh, oh my God. God. A go on the puppy. <laughs> oh, I didn't want to challenge her use of language there. <laughs> now, what's this one? It's Megan. Megan. Hello, Hello Megan. <laughs> No, that's not Jimmy, that's George. The charts <laughs> weren't even invented when George... <laughs> <laughs> played Jonathan, that song. David, what did you have? <laughs> we we are, they're they all were banned. banned. They're all banned. They were banned. Okay, well, I can tell you that uh, Nolan Richard and Jonathan and David, you got it absolutely right. They were all banned by the BBC. Yeah. In 1936, they banned When I'm Cleaning Windows because of the lyrics. They thought they were smutty. Ladies, nighties, I have spied. I've often seen what goes inside. Just, I mean, way too much for the radio. <laughs> uh, God Save the Queen was banned in 1977 for gross bad taste for criticising the monarch. Because presumably the BBC thought it was 1677. <laughs> and Love to Love You Baby was banned in 1975 for its 23 seconds of orgasm. Because I think the BBC were, were suspicious that Donna Summer was faking it. <laughs> To Love You Baby is like a 16 minute long song, so it's absolutely not a sexual song because the men I date will be finished by then and texting me from an Uber, which they would be driving. <laughs> I asked you uh, in Desiree's classic song Life uh, what followed the lyric I don't want to see a ghost, it's the sight that I fear most. Okay, uh, ladies, what do we got? I'd rather have a piece of toast and watch the evening news. Life, all life. All life. <laughs> I didn't know you couldn't sing. Play <laughs> <laughs> the lyrics. Yes. <laughs> That's so shit. Have a piece of do so... <laughs> no, Richard. What did you think it was? I can't imagine a world where someone could write something that bad. So I put, I'm calling Scooby Doo or Scrappy Doo. <laughs> OK, it doesn't even rhyme. Uh, Jonathan, David? We wrote this as a joke. I would like some toast. Not knowing, but apparently, is that it, indeed it, the okay, Let's, yeah, let's take a, a look. Treat yourselves, everyone. Good luck. I don't want to see a ghost. This is something I fear most. I'd rather have a piece of toast. Watch the evening news. <laughs> Incredible. <laughs> so points to Catherine Ashling and points to Jonathan and David. Thank you. No points for you. Uh, OK. I asked you what unusual item of merchandise was brought out by Kiss in 2001. What, what did you think it was? Oh, my God. I no. thought it was... Was it not a range of coffins? Well, it was the Kiss casket, but you've even sort of spelt it with the same K they spelt it with. Well, I, mean... I just... Obviously, if you're Kiss, they'd have to spell it with a K. I mean... 
everything spelt with a K, it's the brand. <laughs> well, Catherine, Ashley, what did you get? Catherine thought of it, but I wrote down guns. Gun. You thought it was Kiss Guns. Uh, <laughs> David, Jonathan, what did you think? Coffee. We put coffee, coffee with, with, a K, with a K. With a K. With a K. Oh. Well, it was, it was the Kiss Casket. Take a look. It's pretty cool. <laughs> Oh, yeah. <coughs> so, Kiss Coffins, you get a point. Thank Coffins, you. you get a point. You get okay. no point for gun. They did, okay. Kiss didn't bring out a gun yet. <laughs> All right. OK, lastly, I asked you if you could list any of the places Rick Rock was seen making love in Shaggy's hit song, It Wasn't Me. What, what do you think? Kitchen, bathroom, Bradford. <laughs> <laughs> That's a hell of a shot. <laughs> 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 OK, uh, Catherine, Ashley? We got them all. Okay. We got me kissing on the sofa. Wasn't me. We got me <laughs> kissing in the shower. Wasn't me. He even got me in the bath. No, rubber bed bedroom. Uh, wasn't me. He even got me in the shower. <laughs> you got. I mean, you got more than enough there. Yeah. 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 Beautifully delivered, Sorry. might I say? Uh, I know. Richard, did you get it? In a cargo bay. In a wind tunnel. <laughs> in a tiger's cornea. <laughs> in Waitrose. <laughs> You say, what you, say what you want about that answer. I mean, it's not correct, but those are the guys uh, you want writing the lyrics. That thank is. You. <laughs> well, well, let's have a listen. Okay, time now for a special bonus round. I'm going to show you three classic album covers. All have been subtly improved. Can you tell me what the albums are? Okay, so here's the first one. The first album cover. <laughs> Gotta name that album. Oh, 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 it's the worst. And the next one? Oh, yeah. <laughs> that furrowed brow. <laughs> and the third one is. <laughs> you look like East Hitler on Dress Down Fridays. <laughs> OK. Have you all got three answers? Yes. Uh, well, let's have a look. Jonathan, David, what did you get? We well, thought Blink-182, but Ooh. I don't know what the album's called. Oh, well, that oh, would, that... I mean, you would, uh, I think, probably get points just for Blink-182. No. Uh, Catherine, no. Ashley, did you oh, get... No, 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 no. What did you get? The album is Blink-182, What's My Name Again? No. Uh, no. All the small what? things! You can have what Blink-182. Is it all the small things? Uh, the, the album is actually called Enema of the State. Enema oh. of the State. Great of pun. Now it makes sense. OK. Uh, ne next one. Did you all get the next one? <laughs> yeah. Adele, uh, 21. Adele 21. You put Catherine Ashley? Adele, Adele 23. 23. There isn't an Adele 23. <laughs> <laughs> no. No, so what did you answer? But seriously, by Adele. <laughs> <laughs> it does kind of look like that, doesn't it? No jacket required by Adele. <laughs> <laughs> this looks like an advert for impotence. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I can tell you, the second uh, was me as Adele, 21. And then the, the last one there. <laughs> Simon and Garfunkel, Uncle Bridge Over Troubled Water. Was it that, or was it... Bummed to death! <laughs> <laughs> the only thing, only thing better than that answer is how pleased you are with that answer. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what, what did you get, Noel, Richard? I put Troubled Waters. Well, it's me and Jonathan. Uh, Simon and Garfunkel, Bridge Over Troubled Water. Well, I can tell you, uh, Jonathan, David, you got all three right. Um, uh, Catherine Ashley, you got two. And uh, Noel and Richard, you got all three. Go. Uh, so at the end of that round, the scores are uh, Catherine Ashing in last place with seven, Noel and Richard with eight, Jonathan and David with ten. <laughs> Join us after the break, when we'll all be a little bit closer to death. Don't miss it. Welcome back to the Big Fat Quiz of Everything. Our next round is all about film and TV. So whether you like watching pirated films or illegally streaming TV shows, this round is for you. <laughs> Lord of the Rings fans recently voted Gollum their favourite ever character. Gaunt, pale and hermit-like, they may be, but those fans love Gollum. <laughs> OK, time for some questions about film and TV. Have a look at this clip of the BBC show Pebble Mill in 1973, featuring a state-of-the-art demonstration from the Doctor Who special effects team. Check it out. The Pebble Miller One special effects department isn't doing too well at the moment over there, but outside, I think we can use one of your monsters again right now to hopefully walk straight through that pane of glass. <laughs> Here he goes. Oh. 
Jimmy, that's you going to work. <laughs> OK, so, uh, well, you saw there a Cyberman. Well, Can we saw an out-of-work actor in a suit. <laughs> OK, you saw an out-of-work actor... No, you saw a Cyberman... <laughs> uh, Jimmy in <and> tinfoil. <laughs> you saw me in tinfoil. <laughs> Apart from the Cybermen and the Daleks, can you name one other enemy of Doctor Who? Oh, easy, easy. Down. I can name ten. Oh, well, yeah. name ten, then. Great. The weather. I've never seen Doctor Who. <laughs> well, the sorry? weather. Move it along. Go. Come on, tinfoil man. Let's do this. <laughs> I'm going back to sleep. <laughs> I love Doctor Who in my house because it's so easy to explain to my daughter how people regenerate. Like, Mummy, how do they... Oh, you know how sometimes Mummy's yes, boyfriend was yes. Dave and all of a sudden it's Nathan? It's the same. <laughs> OK, classic horror movie Scream was released in 1996 oh, and it laid out three things you should never do if you want to survive a horror movie. What were they? You've got to write them down. Three things that you must never do in a horror film. Yeah, if you want to survive the horror film, there are three things you must never do. I'm imagining he's going to know this. Sure. It's in a film. He's bound to know. Come on. OK. The BBC's nationwide programme regularly gave a platform to uniquely talented people. In 1974, Tony McCabe demonstrated a technique he claimed allowed him to jump on hen's eggs and human noses without breaking them. What was that technique? Oh, I know the answer to this. What is it? OK, yeah. next question. In the 80s and 90s, one of Arnold Schwarzenegger's trademarks was his quips when killing bad guys. Have a look at Arnie in one of his most iconic roles as he brutally gets rid of a baddie in this exciting scene from Commando. What I want to know is, what's Arnie's next line? Oh. John, I'm not going to shoot you between the eyes. <laughs> I'm going to shoot you between the balls. He... <laughs> That'd that be terrible, that. though, living with Arnold Schwarzenegger. I'm sure it'd be terrible for any number of reasons, but every time he had to break bad news to you, it would always be, kids, the dog is dead. And you wouldn't know whether it was meant to be a joke or not. <laughs> Jimmy, no one loves you. You know what I mean? It'd be hard. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> OK, have a look at this jaunty little musical number sung by the one and only Tony Monopoly. What TV event is he introducing? <laughs> girls, girls, girls. Girls, 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 Dressed yellow, red, black or white, add a little bit of moonlight for this intercontinental romance. Shy girl, sexy girl, they all love that fancy world. Champagne, a gentle song and a slow dance. Who makes it fun to spend your money? Who calls you honey? Most every day. Girls, girls, girls. <laughs> so I'd like to know what that minicab driver is singing about. You didn't know who Tony Monopoly was, did you know? Did anyone in the room? <laughs> <laughs> the sad thing is that years later he got in trouble and he was sent to jail and he wasn't allowed to collect £200. <laughs> <laughs> Couldn't pass go. That is. <laughs> That is an awful thing to happen to someone called <laughs> yeah. up because of the board game. Uh, what a coincidence! <laughs> because if, <laughs> it, 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 if, the, if he hadn't been called Monopoly, I don't think it would have stung half as much yeah. as it must have. That's, that's the real sentence. If he was he Tony was Connect Four or Barry Ludo. <laughs> <laughs> okay, right. You ready for some answers? Yes, Jimmy. Okay. Aside from the Daleks and the Cybermen, I asked you, could you name one other terrifying Doctor Who enemy? Yeah. What, have you, what have you gone for, Catherine? We were torn between credibility and vaginas. <laughs> the enemy of Doctor Who is vaginas. <laughs> yeah, because, like, I've never slept with anyone who went to a convention for anything. I also would like to see the props department just get two bits of ham and be like, <laughs> Oh, no, it's a vagina! Let's change over to the next actor. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Noel, Richard, what did you put? The weather. You think the enemy of Doctor Who is the weather? Yeah. Also, time and himself. <laughs> okay, so Catherine Ashley, no points. Noel, Richard, no points. Uh, Jonathan, David, yeah, what did you put? Sintarons. Yes. The master. The ice uh, monster. The Wen Chiang. The, uh, the weeping angels. The weeping, weeping angels. I could put the sea devils. The sea devils, the Rani. Uh, the yeah. giant robot. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, dinosaur, dinosaur invasion. So you could just say dinosaurs. Anipods. 
they are all correct nerds. <laughs> you get a point for all of those answers. Hang on, no, we get One bonus. Point. We get bonus no. points. No, because you, you said we could write as many as we could, and we wrote a lot. Yes. We actually ran out of space. One point. Fuck you. <laughs> OK, so I asked you, what were the three things you should never do, according to Scream, if you want to survive in a horror movie? What have you got? Don't have sex. Don't have sex is one of them. Don't, don't uh, go out in the dark and don't scream. Uh, OK, you got one out of three there. Catherine and Ashley. We think we have it. So, run upstairs, have sex and answer the phone. No, you well one. Have sex is is the first oh, one. Oh, not answer the phone because everyone who dies, you know, hello. Do you like scary movies? And then they always end up dying. Uh, Surely. That's not one of the rules. Not one of the rules. Oh. No, Richard, <laughs> go for it. Garden. Boom. <laughs> Make a citizen's arrest. Boom. <laughs> Time in a slasher film to make it, you've got to save yourself. <laughs> Disobey Newton's laws. Oh. You couldn't also, help yourself, could you? The only question we could have got come, right, you've of, got to make jokes. <laughs> so, one of them is um, saying, I'll be right back. Oh, oh that, is, that is correct. Have sex. That is correct. The other one, I don't know. <laughs> it might be garden. <laughs> So you got one point, you got one point, you get two points for that. The actual rules were never have sex, never drink or do drugs, and ah. never say, I'll be right back. Right, thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There we go. I should have known that. It's useful yeah. if you want to survive a horror movie. OK, I asked you how Tony McCabe was able to stand on a hen's egg and human noses without breaking them. No, you what did. did you put? He said well, jump, and I put he never landed. <laughs> <laughs> that, that is sort of correct. It's the... I will give you a point for that. Thank yes. you. Uh, what did you guys put? We put... He kind of barely touched them. He sort of tiptoes tip -toes. over them, but this doesn't was... really land on them. He just... Tip, he sort of jumps and then okay. flushes and, and, them. And then what did you...? We put boil them. <laughs> did you think he boiled the eggs and then he was fine, was he? Yeah. Well, take yeah, a look. Yeah. Take a look at this incredible man in action. We bring you the unique Mr Tony McCabe, a man who claims he can jump on hen's eggs and human noses without breaking them. Where this, this, this thick legs come in? Yeah. You're too high. Up oh, no, the fuzzy click. Oh, there we are. That's it, is it? Oh, yeah, a fuzzy click, yeah. Oh, that, that is the jumping on the eggs. Oh, yes, it's definitely been jumped on, I think. Those two eggs in a stick of dynamite. Is that like <laughs> oh yeah, a bit more danger. <laughs> <laughs> so who got that? Well, I'm going to give a point to Nolan and Richard. There, you can't. He, he oh, never well, lands. That was tiptoes. That was tiptoes. Yeah, so, tiptoes. Yeah. Okay. So points, points, no points. Okay. I asked you how Arnie responded to the death of a bad guy in Commando. What, what do you think he said? Let off some steam. You want to let off some steam? steam. Want well, that would be a very callous thing to say, Catherine. Ashley, what did what do you? Same. That's one way to let off steam. some steam. Okay, and Noel, Richard. Pipe down. Pipe, which is good. Pipe down is good, yeah. And don't exhaust nose. yourself. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean... Take a look. Uh, let off some steam, Bennett. <laughs> Even though they got the answer technically incorrect, could I suggest that maybe you offer a bonus point to Richard and Noel if Richard would give us his Arnold Schwarzenegger impersonation? I mean, I think it's a, it's a fine idea. We can almost certainly trick him into doing it and then not give him the point. Um... <laughs> I mean, you do know I can hear. <laughs> <laughs> do you want me to say the... Pipe... Please, but but in, in the Schwarzenegger voice. Pipe down. <laughs> Don't exhaust Just... yourself. Yes. <laughs> So, points to Jonathan and David, points to Catherine and Ashling. And finally, we had a look at a jaunty little song called Girls, Girls, Girls. I wanted to know uh, what event it was introducing. What did you put? Well, I, I, I thought Miss Great Britain, and I wrote that, and then no. Jonathan said... Cheltenham. Well, he hats. said Cheltenham. It looks like they're at the Oasis, like they're Cheltenham. They're the seaside. <laughs> yeah, but that, isn't that by the seaside? I thought it was a race of Cheltenham. dolphin. I thought it was a dolphin race. <laughs> so, I think it's Miss Great Britain. 
Okay, Miss Great Britain. Uh, Catherine, Ashley? Uh, like, we didn't know, so we just put Love Island 1971. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. Um, and. <laughs> I, I panicked. <laughs> I've got to say, I panicked. And what did, what did you go for? Robot Wars. <laughs> I, c I can tell you the answer was, it was, <laughs> it was Miss Great Britain uh, 1980 held in Morecambe. Well done, well done David. Oh. Thank you. Well done, David. Thank you. Robot Wars. <laughs> Time for a quick bonus round. We've taken a selection of movie reviews from Amazon written by the public. All you need to do is listen carefully and see if you can work out what films these armchair critics are describing. And in case it helps, we've got one of our most distinguished actors, Charles Dance, to read them out. Here's the first one. Which penguin was Morgan Freeman supposed to be? <laughs> None of the penguins sounded like Morgan Freeman. His voice was everywhere. My son Daniel asked me if he was trapped in the ice below. What was I supposed to tell the kid? I said, yes, and we had a good cry together. One star. <laughs> what film was being reviewed there? Okay, so write that down. All right, uh, what, what are your answers? Let's have a look. Happy Feet. You thought Morgan Freeman was doing the voice in Happy Feet? Yes, <laughs> he was well, but it, he did it so well that you couldn't tell it was him, and that's why they were confused. Right, and you think the kid was crying in. in... Wasn't happy about Happy Feet. Okay, they mentioned penguins, so we thought Happy Feet, okay? Oh, was, yeah. You've already got the answer, so it looks so smug. Yeah. You wouldn't know these answers if you sat here. <laughs> Catherine, Ashley. We're pretty <laughs> confident we got it right. It's March of the Penguins. March of the Penguins, okay. Noel, Richard? Shawshank Redemption. Joke. We have put March of the Penguins. Thank you. Uh, well, let's have a look. It was, it was, of course, March of the Penguins. Oh. Yes, yeah, I didn't yeah, see yeah, that. yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, well, you never saw You've got to listen very carefully to this one. Take a look. I've got a 42 inch Panasonic LCD TV with Blu ray, and it's the business. I don't expect to have to watch black and white films on it. It's not 1978. Save up and buy a colour camera, Mr Spielberg, you moron. <laughs> then perhaps people will watch your stupid films. <laughs> One star. <laughs> Charles Dance is just killing it, isn't he? Uh, OK, so what film was being reviewed there? Schlind Schlindler's List. You have to write you down... You don't see <laughs> <laughs> to write down the answer. Schindler's, Schindler's, Schindler's List. list. Schindler's <laughs> List. <laughs> But you know how the game works, right? You write down the you answer. Just you just asked us. You just said, what, what, what is And I'm answer? telling you. Well, I've asked for all the questions, and then you write them down, and then we go through them. That's... Yeah, I feel like rare. we're watching your audition tape, the one before, like, Liam Neeson went in. We're like, David, great to get you in the room. You just really need to say the list right. So, <laughs> just go again. Gindered list. OK. <laughs> <laughs> we've got a in the background. I can't spell it either, but it, should, it is Schindler's List. <laughs> okay. Let's have a look and see what you got. Jonathan, David, what have you got? Schindler's, Schindler's List. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Catherine, Ashling. Well, we also put Schindler's List. Okay, and Noel, Richard. Yeah. If he'd stayed on for a bit, he would have seen some red. <laughs> uh, well, I can tell you the answer is Schindler's List. Points all round. <laughs> okay, final one of these. There were no wolves in this movie. One star. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's so good. So, yeah, I better go to the internet. I better review this one. Okay. No bloody wolves in it. One star. Got it. We've got it. We've got it. You've got it. OK. Noel, Richard? Dances with wolves. I mean, Dances. there are wolves in Dances with wolves. <laughs> Neither of us had seen it, and we imagined that there weren't. Wolf costumes, maybe, but not wolves. <laughs> I, I just thought... Is that the Kevin Costner vehicle where he dances with a wolf? Does he, does he dance with them? Does he? Because if there's no dancing, one star. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Catherine Ashling. We've put Wolf of Wall Street and not, underneath, Dances, dances with Wolves. <laughs> oh, you definitely weren't hedging your bets there. No, we wanted to reiterate how much we didn't think it was that. And we drew a picture of a wolf. <laughs> OK, uh, Jonathan, David? We also went with Wolf of Wall Street. Oh, well, I can tell you the answer is... Wolf of Wall Street. Yes. Points. <laughs> Point, I guess, no points. Let's take a look at what that's done to the scores. OK, Jonathan and David have 17. Catherine and Ashley have 12. Nolan and Richard have 13. Yes, come on. We're doing it. We're doing it. 
<laughs> well, join us after the break, because by now your plans for the evening have clearly fallen through. See you in five. For the Big Fat Quiz of everything, our next round is all about people. Here's a recap of some of history's most important movers and shakers. Lance Armstrong was the world's greatest cyclist. He won the Tour de France an incredible seven times, but was stripped of the titles following a doping scandal. It wasn't just that he'd been taking drugs, he was also peddling. <laughs> Al Capone was a notorious American gangster and criminal mastermind, but he was eventually sent to prison for tax evasion. He really should have had a word with my guy. <laughs> no. Fine. Aged 18, Joan of Arc led an army in a military campaign to drive the English out of France. Now, that is what I call a gap year. <laughs> now, that is what I call a gap year is a bad album. <laughs> <laughs> A lot of dodgy on it, cooler shaker. You know the drill. <laughs> OK, uh, are you ready for more questions? Of course you are. Yes. Uh, right, first up, it's over to the second best host of Countdown, Mr Nick Hewer. Hi, Jimmy. When it comes to selling, I've got a few tips, having been in PR for about a thousand years. But I have to doff my cap to the ladies of Rylestone Women's Institute, who way back in 1999 took part in one of the most amazing, successful publicity stunts of all time. Can your teams remember what they got up to? Oh, yeah. OK, so what publicity stunt were the ladies of Ryleston Women's Institute involved in? Got it. OK. For our next question, it's over to the one and only Joey Essex, who's trying to wrap his brain around the life and work of an international icon. Who on earth is he talking about? He looks like a bit of a geek. Fashion-y scientist. He's got ridiculous white hair, like the colour of snow. If this guy walked into the sugar art, looking like that. I reckon he'd get rated. <laughs> Tomato soup. To me, that's not art. That's more emoji art. <laughs> An actress. She looks like an Oompa Loompa, but like a pink version instead of orange. <laughs> I'm trying to think of her name. Is it Britney Spears? <laughs> Marilyn Monroe? Perfect. I have heard of pop art some, for some reason. Unless I'm thinking of Pop-Tarts. <laughs> This guy claimed that in the future, everyone will be famous for 15 minutes. It's not true. I ain't even been world famous for 15 minutes. Or have I? <laughs> <laughs> what was the question? What are we meant to be I doing? got confused. What, what was it? You got confused? Poor Joey. <laughs> he was talking about an icon of the 20th century. Who was he talking about? OK. I don't know. What do you think? I, for a minute, I had it and it's gone. Oh, but, but, and then you... Oh, yes. Yeah. Yes. I or... gave it to him. <laughs> Why did this man receive over two billion phone calls? Wow. Oh, I've got it! <laughs> Sounds like it might be contagious. Um... <laughs> Nobody's got a phone oh. like that anymore. Ah, oh, yes. We are on a roll. You Let have me just it. say that. We are on an absolute roll. I run. gave you the second one. Get lost. Would you like us to give you this one? Yeah, please. Oh, we no. can't. <laughs> <laughs> OK. Author Salman Rushdie spent over nine years in hiding in the 90s. But what form of entertainment did he say helped him through? Tetris. What form of, <laughs> a form of entertainment? <laughs> Is it? I just don't oh, know. Yeah, yeah. It feels right. Go with your spirit. <laughs> and finally, which iconic character is this? Oh, wow. my God. Holy shit. Noel! <laughs> Why has he got a thesaurus on his head? <laughs> <laughs> the cop's good, though, isn't it? <laughs> All right, everyone finished? Everyone got something? Got them all. Yeah. Maybe. We've OK, got them. <laughs> excellent. OK, so Nick Hewitt asked you what publicity stunt the ladies of Ralston Women's Institute were famous for. Did you get this? Yes. 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 They pumped up the jam. Pump it up. <laughs> they make jam. The so Women's Institute. They make jam. And that was yeah. their publicity stunt, was they made some jam? <laughs> yeah. Loads of jam. OK, Noel, Richard, what did you go for? Human pyramid. <laughs> Uh, we know. They're on they, it now. <laughs> naked. It. They, it was a naked human pyramid, and then someone drove a motorcycle through the arch. <laughs> Jonathan David. Calendar uh, Girls. They, they made the calendar, the calendar girl, they and for a bonus them. point, who has written the new musical about the calendar bonus girls? Point. Gary Barlow. Bonus, bonus point. point. Thank, Thank you. you. <laughs> what did that? I mean, they started a trend. Other people did it. The Stony Stratford Bowling Club did it. Oh. <laughs> 
Oh, yeah. Really? Yeah, go on, okay. bro, The involved. Portsmouth <laughs> Inland Revenue did it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and, and London cabbies. God, Uber hit them pretty hard, didn't it? <laughs> <laughs> OK, OK, well, you got that absolutely right, then. That was the, uh, that was the original Calendar Girls. OK, you saw Joey Essex learning about an internationally famous icon. Who do you think it was? Warhol. Yeah. You think Warhol? You think...? Warhol instead of hole? Look, in good conscience, I think we need to admit that we put something else no, down no, first. No, no, we, we thought well, of that. David, <clears throat> David, Andy David. Warhol. And what did you David, put down first? what did we put down first? We put Big Einstein, one. and we crossed that out, and we wrote <laughs> Warhol. And why did, we, why did we change our mind, David? Because Noel Fielding told us the answer. So, <laughs> see? He knows about we get the Gary point. Barlow, I know about Warhol. That's how it works. Yeah. I'm an art student, he's a twat. <laughs> 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 OK, well, it was, it was okay. uh, Andy Warhol points all around. Yeah. Um, yeah, good. I asked you why this man received over two billion phone calls. David he was, Williams, he was the speaking clock. Oh! He was the voice, uh, the voice of the speaking clock. He didn't actually take all those calls, it was a recorded voice. You looked very close, Catherine. What did you...? Jonathan did help by miming it to us. I was going, and saying, watch, voice. and I was going, speaking, watch, but speaking. But what we wrote down was, um and we apologise to the viewers at home Did you write this. Jonathan's wrist? We wrote talking cock. <laughs> because it was Jonathan speaking? Yeah. <laughs> no, Richard? Yeah, speaking cock. Speaking cock. You're absolutely right, you're absolutely right. No points for you. I asked you how Salman Rushdie kept himself entertained during his time in hiding. What did you put? We did he watch The Weakest Link? <laughs> he loved Dan Robinson. He couldn't tear himself away. He watched The Weakest Link. And he really wanted to be on the celebrity one, but he was in hiding for writing that naughty book. Couldn't do it. <laughs> You've got Jonathan, David, you've gone for the weakest link. I said he's not the weakest link. Catherine, Ashley, what did you think? Well, we just looked at him and we figured that he was watching Harry Potter a lot. In, in the 90s, before it came out. OK. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Noel, Richard? Mini golf, Tetris. Kickboxing. <laughs> <laughs> you, well, you were very close with, with Tetris. Take a look at the man himself. I've become a master of the Nintendo machine. I think I've become very good at defeating all sorts of tiny little two-dimensional enemies um, by, by jumping on them, by stomping them into oblivion or, or knocking them over from underneath or, in, in other ways, unleashing fireballs at them or all the other gifts and powers that one acquires when one adopts the role of, of one of the Mario brothers. <laughs> <laughs> He's taking all the fun out of that. I, I can understand why it took him ten years to apologise, because he speaks slow. <laughs> oh, yeah. OK, so it was, it was Mario Brothers. You play Mario Brothers. Some Good game. Yeah. Relax. Something about like that. OK, uh, so no points to anyone on that one. Mm. Uh, finally, I asked you, uh, who's this? Ronald McDonald. Oh. The original. The original Ronald McDonald, yes. do you think? Yep. What do you think, Catherine, Ashley? We put Bozo, mm. the famous mm. cop sniffer. <laughs> 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 Oh, it's an excellent <laughs> guess. Imagine if that had been right. What did you put? We, we thought it was. We thought it was something to do with opera, like we Paganini. Art, so we, we could, thought we wrote Pagan Paganini, the crying clown. I know he is. We wished we'd visited a McDonald's recently. And now we know. We think they're right. Uh, uh, yes, it was. Like it was the first incarnation of Ronald McDonald before they decided it might be an idea to make him a little bit less completely fucking terrifying. <laughs> Time for a quick bonus round. Have a look under your desks. You'll each find an item of clothing once worn by a celebrity. All I want to know is who wore what. So if you could all put these on. Yes. OK, so you've got to put on I your... I already know mine. You pop these on. You've got to name all six. <laughs> I've never felt more alive, Jimmy. Yeah, that's right. It's a great look, OK? Richard, that is not... That's only half your costume. We've got the other half to come in. Could we bring in the other half of, of Richard's costume? That goes on his... Uh... Hang on. Wait a second. Yeah, pop, pop it on his shoulders there. Are yeah. you having a fucking laugh? <laughs> oh, wow. It's, sque it's squeezing. It's squeezing in. It's definitely a man killer. Um, OK. So you've got to write down who wore what. Quick as you like. <laughs> Quick as you like. OK, time is a fact here because hey. Richard has got about four minutes. Hey. Ashley, oh my God. OK, right. What's everyone wearing? Um. <laughs> Catherine? Yeah. Could you come around the front? Because we haven't seen your oh. costume. Okay. We need a demo of your costume. I didn't even spell that right. Jimmy, so can I be really excused from writing this round? <laughs> Don't do that again. It's going down. 
going down. Still going down. <laughs> snake's going down. <laughs> Count for it. We stay still. <laughs> OK, do you want me to take the snake for a second while you... while you write down? Cos you've got to write down some answers. No, can you... Uh, uh, I'm not sure. <laughs> Why is it the colour of lemon meringue? <laughs> It's, that's its basic. That's its diet. That's what it eats. Okay, a lot of lemon meringue. All right, I'll... <laughs> All right that's fine. Yeah, I got him. Don't let oh, Ashling near him. Oh, Ashling's dressed like is... meat. Oh yeah, he'll try and eat me. <laughs> so I want to know what everyone's wearing. <laughs> oh god, <laughs> Kid George of the Jungle. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so what's 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 everyone wearing? It's not a tie, Jimmy. <laughs> <laughs> No. <laughs> no. 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 Wow. No. 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 The waist. Oh, shit. Hang on. The waist. Oh, hang on. I might need. I might. I mean, that's genuinely scary. <laughs> <laughs> Let's take a look at your answers. OK, so I asked you what everyone was wearing. Jonathan David, what did you get? OK. Well, you Ma Madonna. Madonna. Wearing the pink Bjork. Bjork was Shia one. LaBeouf. MC Hammer, Lady Gaga, Britney, Britney Spears. Spears. OK. Uh, Catherine, Ashling? Yeah, we are right. Same, same. Did you? OK, Britney, Shia LaBeouf, Gaga, <laughs> MC Hammer, Bjork, Madonna, and then Lady Gaga, Bjork, Madonna, How Shia LaBeouf, are you reading? Britney, the snake is moving. MC Hammer. <laughs> Richard? Yeah? If you, you know, I'll make sure your kids are all right. <laughs> okay. okay. Let's get rid of the snake. Points all round. So let's have a look and see how they're, how they're meant to look. OK, I can tell you, uh, Jonathan is wearing Madonna's conical bra from her 1990 Blonde Ambition tour. David is wearing the swan dress Bjork wore at the uh, 2001 Oscars. Catherine is wearing MC Hammer's trousers from the 90s classic You Can't Touch This. Ashling has got Lady Gaga's 2010 Video Music Awards meat dress on. Noel is wearing the paper bag Shia LaBeouf sported at the 2014 Berlin Film Festival. And, of course, Richard is wearing Britney Spears' 2001 VMA's outfit, complete with an albino Burmese python. <laughs> OK, let's take a look and see what that's done to the scores. Uh, so, in last place, we've got uh, Catherine Ashing with 19 points. <gasps> Noel and Richard are beating him with 22. Ooh. But in the lead, Jonathan and David with 26. Come on, come on. <laughs> yeah. Join us after the break when hopefully Richard will have put away his snake. See you in a few minutes. Welcome back to the Big Fat Quiz of Everything. This next round is all about science, brought to you in collaboration with scientists from CERN, MIT and Laboratoire Garnier. <laughs> uh, before the questions, I'll give you a quick refresher course on all things scientific. The first ever mammal to be cloned was Dolly the sheep. No one knows how many sheep have been cloned since, because every time the scientists try to count, they fall asleep. <laughs> the hardest thing in the human body is tooth enamel. Or is it, ladies? Yeah, it is, yeah. <laughs> Francis Crick and James Watson both claim to be the father of DNA, but which one is the real father? If only there was a way to find out. <laughs> okay. uh, time for some more uh, big fat questions. First up, have a look at this news bulletin from the early days of robotics. Meet Alpha the robot, constructed entirely of metal, but controlled only by the voice. Ah! Tell me, do you like little boys? was an early prototype of me. Um, <laughs> so there was Alpha the Robot there from 1934. Eight years later, sci-fi writer Isaac Asimov came up with the three laws of robotics. What were they? What yes. were the three laws oh, of robotics? I know them. Okay, I don't know. That's that. a strong look, isn't it? Isn't that a strong look? Take that, hipsters. That's the next look. <laughs> next question. The distance from your elbow to your wrist is the same as what? <coughs> I'll give you a clue. It's another part of the anatomy. The distance from there to there. <laughs> well, I think I know where you've gone with this. <laughs> I don't know. The distance from the, there... The wrist to the, to the elbow is the same as... And we can't say the other arm. We've got to rule that out. 
I mean, that is a very good answer. I'm putting that down. No, it's not. You can't say the other Jimmy arm. It's not the other me. arm. <laughs> Don't you think so? Hmm. OK, next question. <laughs> With the help of this newborn baby, this scientist is demonstrating something. Can you tell me what? I've got it. Next question. Over to gold medal winning super couple, Laura and Jason Kenny. Hi, Jimmy. Now, we did pretty well at the Rio Olympics. And um, like most Olympic cyclists, we were competing on the Cervelo T5 GB. But can your teams tell us by what name the Velocipede, the first proper pedal bike, was more commonly known? <laughs> so, what was the first <laughs> proper bicycle popularly known as? OK, Bill Gates founded Microsoft and helped revolutionise home computing. But in 1994, in a TV interview, he demonstrated a particularly unusual physical talent. What was it? You've got to write down oh, Bill wait, Gates' no. hidden oh, party piece. He looks exactly like the beta from R.E.M. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you ready for some answers? I asked you what, uh, what the three laws of robotics were, as stated by Isaac Asimov. Noel, Richard, what do you think, the laws of robotics? Don't let the beat control your feet. <laughs> Don't let the beat control your feet. Under any circumstances. That's a great I mean, rule. Two, be punctual. <laughs> great and rule. Three, no genocide. <laughs> it's as simple as that, Jimmy. OK. Uh, Catherine, Ashley, what did you get? Rule number one, don't talk about robotics. Rule number two, <laughs> refer to rule number one. Rule number three, don't kill humans. <laughs> one of those is one. Yes! <laughs> Uh, We've got the first one, thou shalt do no harm to humans. Yeah. The second one is, you shall obey humans unless it contradicts rule number one. And the third rule was, you shall protect yourself unless it contradicts rules one and two. That's 100% wow. right. Yes, of course. <laughs> right. I don't like that robotics has inspired the robot dance. You know that one? Why don't you like it? Yeah, yeah, yep, yep, yep. <laughs> That's because quite good. dancing is supposed oh. to be an advertisement for how you would be in bed. And I don't I don't want to Well that feels this is how I'd be in bed. That I mean, feels like... pretty accurate to me. I dance for about 30 <laughs> seconds. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, you've seen my sex tape. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so, so uh, points to uh, Jonathan and David. Eh? Well done. Thank you. Um, Thank you. I asked you what the distance from your elbow to your wrist <laughs> is the same as. What did you put? <laughs> the other arm. The, the two, same bit on the other same. arm. <laughs> that bit to there is the same as that bit there. It's a mirror. Dude, we did this joke in the late 90s. No, <laughs> they, they, they did do that joke earlier. Did they? Yes. It's the other arm is the actual answer. It's not a joke, we're giving you the answer. <laughs> That's the actual answer. Okay, guys, uh, you wrote down the joke that we, you did earlier. We did write down the joke. But you we just weren't paying yet. attention for I mean, you're in the same room. Well, we were laughing at our really good joke. <laughs> And now, what, what did you get for this, Catherine, Ashley? We said the length of this is, is, the, is what length of sausage you're looking for. <laughs> OK. And you know what we mean. Like in a breakfast. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, I can, I can tell you, no-one got it, but the, uh, I, I asked you what the distance from your elbow to your wrist was, the same as, it's the same length as your foot. That's so huh? boring, that answer. <laughs> so, so, technically, we get that a point. Well oh, I... oh, it's right. <laughs> I am right, yeah. Look. There's no way that's, that's true. Not look true. at this. That's not true, look. No, well, well, hang on. Put it up on the desk. Put that up on the desk. <laughs> Why have you got a little tiny hobbit feet? Yeah. I'm going to put it together for you. It's quite hard to get the two, it's the two, the two together. You need it, David. You need to put it in the oh, inside. Ah. Yeah, that's the same size. It's... No! Look, there's about two inches... Look at that. No, that's, that's the same size. In here, so, like, breathe. Breathe into, David, breathe into it, David. Breathe into it. David, you're not giving breathe, birth. Breathe. <laughs> oh, you're so close. You're so close, to... Careful, There he is. It's the same length. It's, the same it's length. nowhere near the same length. It is the same length. Why is your foot... Why is it wet? <laughs> <laughs> because, um... I don't know. It's just been in my shoe for quite a long time, mate. <laughs> <laughs> OK. Um, OK, right, okay. I asked you what was going on in this photo. What did you put? It's how well a baby's grip. A baby's grip. Because when they're first born, if you just touch them with the hand, they grip it. They grip the finger, and that's the doctor's check it. And you've got uh, Catherine, Ashley? Grip reflex. It's, the, it's when we were monkeys, and we used to have to hang on to stuff, but now we don't need any more. It's still there. OK. It's horrible, though. Like, do doctors have a reflex to spoil a special moment? Because, <laughs> like, your baby's holding on, and you're like, yeah, oh, my God! And the doctor's like, yeah, that's because he's a monkey. 
Um, Noel, Richard, did you get this? Yeah, we put that babies instinctively grip. And what else did you write? How not to parent. <laughs> Don't pick up your baby with a pencil. Because what if that pencil broke? It's awkward. It's an awkward... Just get a new pencil. It's not, they're not expensive. <laughs> OK, so Cycling's golden couple, uh, Laura and Jason Kenny, asked you what the first pedal bike was more commonly known as. What, what did you think? Bone Rattler. <laughs> Sold at Halfords. Bone... <laughs> Bone Rattler. OK, uh, Catherine, Ashley. I'm not proud. I'm not proud, Catherine. I feel like I've let the team down. You know it's not funny. I know it's funny. You'll never let me down. I put down Vicious Cycle. <laughs> <laughs> She did. She wrote that and it was v funny. Vicious cycle. I see what you've done. OK. Funny. OK, fine. Bit fine. of a laugh, isn't it? Let's not get into a vicious cycle. <laughs> <laughs> it works. It's, it they're works. all better when Arnie says them. OK. <laughs> David Jonathan. The, the butt spreader. <laughs> I think it is a bone shaker. Ah! It was actually called the uh, Velocipede, a better known as the Bone Shaker. The Bone Shaker? The Bone Shaker, I think so... Bone Rattler maybe gets okay, a point. OK, but, but I actually Thank you. said Bone Shaker. He did say it. You I did. point to Noel and Richard. You said it, but I'm afraid you've got to write them down. That is the quiz that we're playing. Oh, this is bullshit. What? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, and finally, I asked you what unique talent Bill Gates demonstrated on a TV show <laughs> in, in 1994. <laughs> Sucking his own penis. <laughs> <laughs> yes. See, see. Yes, correct. Look at the correct. handwriting. The... Look at the handwriting. <laughs> see where it changes. <laughs> see where the handwriting changes. <laughs> we have got the correct answer. What is the correct answer? Jump over a chair. I think you can jump over a chair from a standing start. Wow. Yes. <laughs> okay. So, uh, Catherine, Ashley, what do you get here? Oh well, we have it on pretty good authority that he shits money. <laughs> Jonathan, David, what did you? We said he was like a he, he was like a sort of human tripod that his penis was so large. We're not proud of that. We're not that proud of that. He could just sort of lean on it like that <laughs> and invent windows. And probably afterwards. <laughs> we'll take a look and see. Is it true that you can leap over a chair from a standing position? It depends on the size of the chair, but this chair <laughs> probably so. <laughs> Will you do it? Well, I don't know with the microphone on if it's doable. Watch the light, okay? Uh, I'll cheat a little bit. <laughs> yes! <laughs> but I, I took a step before I did it. It's yeah, okay. that's not from a standing position. That's good. That's good. Well, he said, he said, I mean, he, it's something, right? That's like jumping over a tennis net, isn't it? I can do that. Then that's you bollocks. You can do that. I mean... I if, can. I mean, we've got health and safety I here. I could jump over you from here. <laughs> I'm like a flea. <laughs> In some respects, yes. That you want to try? You crouch and I jump over you from a standing position. Do I want a back injury? No, I'll be fine. <laughs> uh, well, it's time now to welcome a special guest. It's double gold medalist Johnny Peacock. <laughs> Is this, the, this is the Rio. This, this is the, the Rio middle. Gold. Do you want to have a look? Oh, no, I'm with you. I would never take it off. <laughs> Johnny! Oh. Could you jump over Jimmy? <laughs> Will you let me jump over it's you? A bit high. I'll let you jump over me. Yes! yes. 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 Yeah. Would you look at He's wearing pixie boots. Yeah. You're an athlete. Yeah. Oh, um, no. you you just bend down here. Here. If you can do it. Just, just bend down in front yeah. of you. Yeah. Of course. This is quite weird. <laughs> I mean. I've been on for five seconds already. I'm bending over. <laughs> like this way. Yeah, okay. But, but on your knees. Don't, I can't jump knees. over that. That's too high. <laughs> Wearing the medal. <laughs> Ready? Go for it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that was good. Well in the <laughs> so we've got we've got a question here related to uh, sports related. Question. It is sport related. Okay, tell us okay. the question. Uh, so, I'm going to demonstrate three sporting celebrations from three different sportsmen, and you guys have got three. Time to you're doing three. Out. Three. Go on, I'll grab those three. Okay, so you got three. The first, first one. one you've is... got to write down all three. That. So I'm sure if you if you don't if get you that, I'm going to be a little bit. Yeah, but maybe we're not into what you're into. <laughs> okay, so that's that's the first one. You should all get that. Second one, slightly more challenging, but go. Second one is, and this is not the proudest moment of my career, but I'm not a great dancer. I'm just going to say, but I'm just going to go for it. So it is. <gasps> I mean, got it. We got it. We got it. 
You can put yeah. it on. And, and the one? last one is... Oh. What? What? <laughs> oh, it's good. It's good. I mean, he's nailed that. <laughs> along yeah. those lines. Could we see the last one again? It's not that I didn't see it, it's just I, I like seeing you uncomfortable. No, Josh, no. leave him alone. I you should know. I've been, I was told that you'd, you'd know this one. <laughs> no, he's, he's an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> the dance was incredible. Dan I mean, Can we see your... We've got to see your... Oh, mine isn't any better than that, but, I mean, it's something. <laughs> <laughs> OK, you've all got answers. Right, let's, let's have a look. Now, this could be painful for everyone concerned. <laughs> we've written Usain Bolt, then we've written football, innit? <laughs> uh, which I'm pretty sure we're right about. Oh, cool. And then our third one is Tiger Woods eating berries in the woods after he's been kicked out of his house by his wife. <laughs> okay. Uh, Noel, Richard, what did you get? Bolt. You saying Bolt, the Bolt man? Yeah. Peter Crouch. Yeah. Tarzan. <laughs> you thought the third one was Tarzan? Yeah. Celebrating his sporting. He's very good at um, cycling. Swing. There you go. Cheater makes his bikes. <laughs> <laughs> Team Williams, what did you put? First one, lightning bolt, Usain Bolt. Second one, we put Peter Crouch Peter doing Crouch the robot. Peter the robot. Crouch. Thank God running. they got that. Yeah, I mean, well, you're, that. it was incredible. No, yeah. um, the last one, we were guessing we thought it might be tennis player, that Djokovic does really after win. Ah. Yeah, but... What does he do? Uh, is it Djokovic? Uh, I need to be on my old fours, yeah, Djokovic. Wow, we got it. We got it all. Every time he wins Wimbledon. Usain Bolt, Peter Crouch, and Djokovic. We got the lot. Three points, one point. Two points. Um, OK, let's take a look at what that's done to the scores. So I can tell you now, uh, Catherine and Ashling uh, have got 22. Oh. Noel and Richard have 27. In the lead with 33, Jonathan and David. Oh, um, <laughs> before we take a quick break, before we take a quick break, ladies and gentlemen, give it up one more time. Johnny Peacock! Thanks for coming on. Oh, <laughs> Welcome back to the Big Fat Quiz of Everything. Our next round is all about fashion and lifestyle. I don't follow fashion anymore. In fact, fashion has recently taken out a restraining order, which means I'm not allowed within ten years of it. <laughs> For me, comfort is far more important than fashion, which is why, under this fancy suit, I'm wearing an old, well-worn bra and no knickers. <laughs> It's a troubling image for everyone. They're laughing because you said fancy suit. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, coming from you, in a caftan made of cat's eyes. <laughs> this is a, a thing of beauty. Do you want to see the full, the full thing? Yeah, yeah. go on, show us the full thing. Close your eyes. OK. I'll tell you when to open them. I mean... <laughs> open them, Jimmy. <laughs> ah! <laughs> thing of beauty, isn't it? It's, it's so, sometimes when the Klu Klux Klan want to have a bit of fun. <laughs> <laughs> Wrong on so many levels. OK, uh, for, for the first question, over to Master of Illusion, Darren Brown. Darren Brown. Hi, Jimmy, Jim, James. This is Darren. <laughs> I, uh, I have predicted many things in my time, including the flipping lottery. But even I sometimes need a second opinion, which is why I use my magic eight ball. You ask it a question, you give it a shake, and it reveals to you any one of 20 different answers, such as uh, most likely, don't count on it, and outlook good. Those are just three of the answers. But can your teams, and they are teams, name me three, that's three more. Three? That's a lot. He seems to doubt oh. us. <laughs> I always worry when I see any footage of him that my, he's just emptied my bank account. Oh, like, <laughs> I feel like I may be in a trance now. I'm gonna draw a picture. Don't oh. draw a picture of a penis or something. <laughs> and next up, have a look at this news report from 1978. Why has this reporter been forced to divide up his shopping? You can purchase an orange from a shop, but tinned oranges are illegal. An Easter egg is all right, but sausages, certainly not. You can have biscuits, but not the cheese to go with it, according to Mr. Taylor. A chunky beef and kidney pie is all right, but certainly not lard. <laughs> ah, when was that, when was that from? Ah, that's 1978. 78. OK. OK, wow. so why was that reporter forced to divvy up his shopping? Oh, you think so? No, I don't know, maybe. Next is over to our favourite Chelsea resident, Ollie Locke. Hi, Jimmy. 
Now, as you know, it's a complete social faux pas to turn up to any event unsuitably dressed. Whether it be a cocktail reception or at the polo, I always stick to the dress code. And when I play tennis, I only wear white. Now, back in the 19th century, wearing white was seen as a symbol of your status. But there was another reason why tennis players started to adhere to the strict all-white dress code. Can you tell me why? Got it. Okay. Got it. Yeah, got yeah it. we got it. All right, Jimmy. OK, next question. The first ever Pez dispenser was launched in 1948. They later became huge hits with collectors when the company added character heads like Mickey Mouse. But what was the mechanism originally designed to resemble and why? Got it. <clears throat> so, Pez dispensers, what were they meant to look like initially and oh. why? Jimmy, I don't want to be unkind, but you look like a Pez dispenser. <laughs> <laughs> OK, next question. The famous Valentine's Day poem first appeared in a collection of nursery rhymes published in 1783. All I want to know is, what was the original next line? The rose is red, the violet's blue. I've got chlamydia, so have you. <laughs> <laughs> OK, so, uh, well, uh, first up, Darren Brown asked you for uh, some uh, Magic 8 Ball answers. So what do you think of the options the uh, Magic 8 Ball gave you? We were looks unlikely, yes, oh. never, no way, and one we can't read anymore. Tomorrow. You Please can have go. one hey. point for yes. Is that...? <laughs> yes, is, yes is one of them. Uh, Catherine, yeah. Ashley? Uh, definitely yes. Probably not. And, uh, not even if you were on fire. <laughs> you can have one point for yes, definitely. Definitely yes, <coughs> yeah, OK, one point there. And Noel, Richard? Nap immediately. <laughs> Worry. <laughs> it's infected. <laughs> Well, I mean, you could, you could have had any of these. You could have had concentrate and ask again, yes, better not tell you now. Without a doubt, my sources say no. Uh, well, I asked you why the reporter had to divide up his shopping. What do you think? We thought we it thought was something was... like entering the common market or something. No, like... It's a very good guess. It's not right, but it's no. very good. OK, <laughs> okay uh, what do you get, Catherine Ashley? We thought he was sorting through acceptable and not acceptable nicknames for wives. Because <laughs> <laughs> it was like the 70s. So lard is no, sausages, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I've been called worse. <laughs> <laughs> Easter eggs. Easter eggs, is that OK as a nickname? Easter eggs is a sexy nickname. Tin peaches? <laughs> that gets me going on a Friday. <laughs> uh, well, what did you put? A no. gang hazing ritual. <laughs> <laughs> it was not a gang hazing ritual. It, it was actually a confusion over the Sunday trading laws. Because oh. you could only buy certain things on a Sunday. Oh. They repealed the laws in 1994 oh. because they were crazy. OK, next we heard from Made in Chelsea's Ollie, who wanted to know why tennis players wear white. What do you think? Because they are virgins and will be sacrificed. <laughs> <laughs> mm. Is it because they're all racist? <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> Catherine, Ashley. We also got the same right answer. Virgins. <laughs> I play a lot of tennis, I'll have you know. Yeah, virgins. So there you go, point. Do you wear white when you play? Yes, because I'm a virgin. Oh, shit. Um, <laughs> OK, well, I, I can tell you the answer was it was to avoid unsightly sweat patches. Oh. oh. They thought it was gross that people would sweat when doing physical exercise, so they wore white so it wouldn't show up as much. Um, I asked you the reasoning behind the Pez dispenser's design. Why did it look like that? We oh. say it's a bullet cartridge. Oh, like ah. that's so again, you've got um, very good guesses in this round. Incorrect, but Ooh. very good. Mm. What, what did you think it was, Richard? Lionel Richie. <laughs> uh, what did you, uh, Catherine, Ashley? We thought maybe it looked like one of those lighters because back then kids were allowed to smoke and they were trying to wean them off with sugar. That is exactly the right Woo! answer. Oh my God! Take a look at this. It was originally designed to stop people from smoking. Yes! Yes. <laughs> All right, finally, I asked you to complete the Valentine's Day poem, The Rose is Red, The Violet is Blue. Uh, Noel Fielding. Ghost. <laughs> Ghost toast. Toast. <laughs> OK, Catherine, Ashley. We put uh, roses are red, violets are blue, sugar is sweet, and you have diabetes. Type 2. <laughs> I mean, very good. Yeah. Jonathan David? The rose, rose is red, red the violet is blue. blue. Do, Do you take it up the flu? <laughs> <laughs> is the flu part of is that part of a chimney? The flu is the part the business end of the chimney. Okay. It's a bit you need to clean. So what would that mean? Are you a chimney sweep? Yeah. <laughs>
Well, the answer was uh, the rose is red, the violet's blue, the honey is sweet, and so are you. Oh. Okay. At the end of that round, the scores are Catherine and Ashing have 24, Noel and Richard have 27, Jonathan and David in the lead with 34. Thank you. Thank you. After the break, to confirm your suspicion, the people off the telly are indeed much dumber than you. See you in a bit. to the Big Fat Quiz of everything. This next round is all about crime and scandal. The O.J. Simpson trial split public opinion, with some people saying he did it and some people saying he didn't do it. Well, one thing's for sure, he definitely did it. <laughs> John Bobbitt's penis was cut off by his wife while he slept. Afterwards, John Bobbitt became a porn star. Well, not straight after. Straight after, he screamed for a week. <laughs> OK, last set of questions. This is former NASA intern Thad Roberts. He hit the headlines for stealing moon rocks in 2002. He got eight years in prison. Why did he do it? Wow, who sold them and bought those shorts? <laughs> <laughs> Who um, owns the moon? <laughs> I think it is Noel. I think that's probably... I am the moon. OK. <laughs> in 2007, Peter Addison was arrested after he broke in and graffitied a campsite in Stockport, earning him the title Britain's Dumbest Criminal. How was he caught? Yeah, most people would break out of a campsite in Stockport, wouldn't they? <laughs> <laughs> Write down your well, answers. What was his name, Jimmy? His name was Peter Addison. If you're watching, I'm sure you're a reformed character now and you regret this terrible incident from your past. But it was fucking stupid. <laughs> <laughs> Got it. Which service, launched in 1937, was said by the London Evening News to be useful in urgent situations, such as if, for instance, the man in the flat next to yours is murdering his wife, or if you have seen a heavily masked cat burglar peering round the stack pipe of the local bank building. Did cat burglars actually used to wear masks when they were walking around before heavy, the time? Heavy, heavily masked. <laughs> OK, next it's over to Darcy Bustle, who's got a question for us. Darcy. Now, just like the rest of us, I like a bit of gossip, and I was intrigued to learn about the biggest celebrity scandal of 1926. It involved over a thousand police officers and made front page news. It saw Arthur Conan Doyle visit a medium in the bid to help. Now, what do you think happened? OK, so what was the big celebrity scandal of 1926? Has any, any of you got any ideas? Because I can give you a clue here. Yeah, yes, a clue. Yeah, 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 was, yeah, yeah. Um, Someone, someone disappeared, and it was ironic that oh. they had disappeared. Oh, fuck. It was, it was a huge mystery. <gasps> uh, ironic that they disappeared. Got it, got it, got it, got it, got it. Thanks, Jimmy. And finally, time for another So What You See. Take a look at this. Can you work out what famous controversy is being spelt out here? OK. Ow. I'm good at these. Oh. Okay. Cash. 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 Don't oh, say it out here loud. Here we go. Don't we say it. them out loud, because We've that sort it. of gives it away. It's quite satisfying. No. Um, Come on, Ashley. Who is that? We have we got it, Jimmy. Got it, mate. Bang, double, fucking wow. Give us the trophy now. Blah, blah, We've blah, 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 blah. done it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, That's everyone, finish. Let's have some answers. Yes. Okay. All right. I asked you what Fad Roberts did with the moon rocks he stole. What do you think? He gave them to his girlfriend, who sold them on eBay. And that's how he got caught. OK, he gave something to his girlfriend. Uh, Catherine, Ashling. We weren't sure. We thought maybe he'd try to smoke them. <laughs> or maybe he tried to sell them to a different planet. <laughs> and now I'm thinking maybe he, like, stoned a creationist. <laughs> OK. Noel, Richard, what did you think? <laughs> he hid them initially, then eBay. OK, uh, well, I can tell you, he laid them out on his bed and had sex with his girlfriend on them. <gasps> no. <laughs> How did people find out he had sex on the rocks unless he told everybody? I think he told everybody. Uh, well, I think you would tell everyone, wouldn't Why? you? I've done it on a moon rock. <laughs> <laughs> what a boast. <laughs> I mean, Big <laughs> deal. Because, effectively, they had sex on the moon. Yeah, well, they, they didn't did. have sex on them. They had sex on a moon rock, and it went up his arse. Well, it's probably you could. <laughs> 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 Because that makes everything more fun. OK, no <laughs> points to anyone there. I asked you how Peter Addison was caught after he graffitied a campsite building. Uh, David, you seem he, very confident. He wrote his own name under the graffiti. He signed his own graffiti. OK, what do you think, Catherine, Ashley? He said, Peter was here. You got the right idea. And uh, Noel, Richard. He filmed himself and put it on YouTube. Is Boom, right? Jimmy. Right? Boom. <laughs> he, he wrote the words, Peter Addison was here on the wall. 
Oh. <laughs> I've never looked. <laughs> he also wrote, British garden birds are gay. <laughs> That's pretty good. OK, so, um, points, <laughs> okay. points, no points. I asked you what service launched in 1937 was said to be useful if the man in the flat next to yours is murdering his wife or if you've seen a heavily masked cat burglar peering around the stack pipe of the local bank building. What, what did you put? The police. 999. 999. They introduced the 999 service. 999 service. 999. 999. You got all oh, points all round for that. Points all round. Yay. OK. And next, Darcy Bustle asked you what was the biggest celebrity scandal of 1926? What, what, what got, did you get? We got confused. We thought it might be the disappearance of Agatha Christie, but we think we're probably wrong on that. <laughs> what did you write, though? Well, we wrote... I thought it might be some kind of hoax and... and he Conan wrote Dodge. Sherlock yeah. Holmes goes missing, and I said, <laughs> Sherlock Holmes go, go, can't go missing because he doesn't exist. OK, Catherine, Ashley, what did you get for that? We put down... He was trying to solve his own murder. So you thought the answer was... He was trying to solve his question. own murder. Yeah. No! <laughs> OK, Noel, Richard. I thought it was something to do with the costume and fairies, but actually, I think you're right. I think Agatha Christie disappeared. She did disappear. She did, but I, I don't think, know if it was then. And I think that... What are the fairies? <sighs> the Cottingley fairies. Oh, you know yeah. Arthur Conan Doyle? Oh, yes, I think you yes. might be right. That's because Arthur Conan yeah. Doyle did investigate. These little girls had pictures of fairies. Well, you yeah. didn't write it yes. down so you don't get the points, but you were right. It was Agatha Christie's disappearance. Uh, OK, well, Jonathan David, you get the points. Agatha Christie disappeared for 11 uh, days, uh, sparking uh, a nationwide manhunt. OK, and finally... Uh, you sort of say what you see. Uh, what, what did you see? Yeah. Catherine, Ashling? We got Man Tree on Paddle Scandal. <laughs> Man Tree on Paddle Scandal. OK. That is not right, Jimmy. Uh, Noel, Richard? Cash four. Cash. Switchfish baby doll. <laughs> <laughs> or, or question, <laughs> scandal. Double or... Scandal. Cat. Questions. No. Uh, what, what did you get, Jonathan? Ca David? Cash for honours scandal. It's the right answer. Yeah. Yes. Oh. Yeah. Points to Jonathan and David. <laughs> OK, time now for the big question. Please welcome my very special guest, the London Philharmonic Choir and their conductor, Neville Creed. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. We've classed things up a little bit. OK. Thank you for joining us this evening. Not at all. Excellent. Now, Not you're going to be playing... You're going to be playing four, I believe, R&B and rap classics. Oh, uh, lovely. ..in your own style. Yep. Uh, all, all you need to do is write down the song and the artist. Right. Four songs. <coughs> That's it. Got it. Yeah. So, the first song. Let's hear the first song. Yeah. Okay, so we need the artist and the song. Okay, next one. Hit it. Come here, girl. Go ahead, be gone with it. Come to the back. Go ahead, be gone with it. VIP. Go ahead, be gone with it. Drinks on me. Go ahead, be gone with it. You'll see what you're twerking with. Go ahead, be gone with it. Look at those hips. Go ahead, be gone with it. Take me small. Go ahead, be gone with it. Get your sexy on. Get your sexy on. So we need the artist and the song. OK, third one. Hit it. Final one. OK, so uh, did, did you get them? Noel, Richard? 
Yeah. Four artists, four songs. What yeah. have you got? 50 Cent in the club. 100%, yeah. In the club. But Brown in the girl air. in the ring. But <laughs> in the air. <laughs> I mean, no. No. Something by Tony Monopoly. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I didn't know which one, I knew it was Tony Monopoly. We okay. got the last and one. The last right? one is Vanilla Ice. Vanilla I know that Ice. One. I do okay, know that. So you got you got four points there. Okay, uh, Jonathan, David, what did you get? We said 50 cents. It's your birthday. <laughs> it's your birthday, that's uh, what we call okay, it. Okay, so you get one point there. Okay. 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 No, no, Missy, Missy Elliott. Get your free the second one. No, you're incorrect on both of those. Then we yeah. thought it was something Rihanna. by Rihanna, we we, but we didn't know what. Oh, and then you thought and, and then we thought Kanye West. Oh, you got what you got one point there. Ashley. The Good. foreign twerkers, we knew it. And great job, by the way, everyone. Oh, okay. So it. did you get them all? Did yeah. we? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes, we did. Okay. So what do you got? 50 Cent. In the club. OK. Justin Timberlake. Sexy back. Correct. Nicki Minaj. Super bass. And Vanilla Ice. Ice, ice, baby. Wow. Eight points. A full house wow. there. Yeah. Well done. <laughs> <laughs> yes, uh, one. Well. That means the final scores are um, in last place, Noel Fielding and Richard Iwadi with 32. <laughs> with a very creditable 34, Catherine Ryan and Ashling B. They got pretty close for the winners of the big fat quiz of everything, Jonathan Ross and David Williams. <laughs> I will give you Thank your music. You. You've earned that, gentlemen. We do. A big thanks to our amazing panel, Thank our you. wonderful oh. choir, all our special Good guests, night. and thanks to you for watching. Good night. <laughs>